see. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the webinar today. Going to talk a little bit about the short strangle versus the iron condor. And a short strangle is a very simple strategy if SPX is at 23.50. A short strangle would be sell one. We might go 45 days out, but let's just say sell one April 2190 put and sell one April 2430 call. So a short strangle is you're selling an out of the money, if this is the current price, Selling an out of the money call. In this case, the out of the money call is, let's say, 80 points out of the money, and sell the 2190 puts. In this case, 160 points out of the money. Is it normal when you sell a? Uh, wait, well, well, let me hold off on that question. So, <clears throat> what's the from a business model? From a business model, is selling a far out of the money put and selling a far out of the money call, is there edge to it? Could you, could you conceivably say, I'm going to open up a short strangle in business and do it? Is there edge in there? Yes or no? I mean, is it, is it something that you could start a business doing? Does it make sense? What do you guys think? Yeah, from the fundamental start of it, you're selling a far out of the money put and a far out of the money call, and you can look at it from a business model. Hey, I'm selling a far out of the money put, far out of the money call. The probabilities, right, are that we're not going to finish beyond these short puts or short calls, and I'll collect the money, right? So you're getting time decay, you're selling them far out of the money, maybe you're getting some probability. So, I mean, it can make sense, right, from a from a probabilities, time decay, this type of model. So if you did something like this, the graph might look like this. So if you had, in this example, if we're at 2350, again, this is a abbreviated graph, but I'm just, and this is 2350, and we're selling a put at, I'm not a good artist, but we're selling a put at 21.90, and we're selling a call at 24.30. So if this is the current price, but the gist of it, folks, is you can see here that unlike a speculative trade where you need the market to move, you know, if we're at 23.50 and we're selling a 21.90 put and a 24.30 call, let's say over the next 30 or 40 days, let's say that's the duration of this, everywhere in here kind of you make money, right? So unlike a spec trade, you know, you're taking, you're taking the model of what, what industry kind of, at this if you looked at all the different industries out there, what industry kind of does this and makes a lot of money at it? Any industry that you think is kind of similar to this insurance company? Rick and Steve and Matt, they buy health insurance, they buy disability insurance, they buy life insurance, they buy toenail insurance, they buy belly button insurance, they buy everything, right? And what the insurance company says, yeah, hey, guys, let's go. The insurance company is selling the out-of-the-money calls and puts because they say, most months, Steve and Rick aren't going to get sick. Most months, they're not going to die. Most months, their belly button's not going to turn the other way. So they collect the money, right? So the, the insurance companies are in the business of selling short strangles to a, to a degree, right? And But when you have this, you're selling out of the money, call and put, they have the same they have to deal with the same problem. They have to deal with the same problem that if they want to be successful as 
people in the short strangle business do to be successful? What is that? What do insurance companies have to deal with? What do they have to deal with effectively? The risk, right? Claims, right? And 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 in the in the option business, they we have to deal with how do I I know if I'm in this short strangle business, most years I'm going to make I'm going to win ten or eleven times out of 12 or nine out of 12, but I'm gonna win most of the time. And so in the short strangle business over time, you can be around in 10 or 15 years if, what are you gonna do those big events, right? What are you gonna do, how are you gonna handle this when we get a 10% correction down? or a 7% move up, right? And that's really the success of a short strangle person and the success of an insurance company is, how do you handle that? Now with an insurance company controlling risk, and, and again, I'm not an expert at the insurance company, but don't they have, I don't know if anybody here is in the insurance business, but you can do like, so let's say an insurance company you know, has a lot of people in, I'm making this up as I go along, but let's say they had a lot of people in a coal mining area, right? And they started to get, you know, maybe more claims for black lung or whatever. Is there anything they can do? Is there anything they, what, what, what could they do in that situation? If they start getting more, how could they control their risk? They could maybe try to trade some of that off, right? They could raise more premiums or, could they maybe sell some of those or get rid of some of those, right? Maybe they have too much risk there, right? Is that what it's called, Thomas? Lay it off by reinsurance. So I could, if I have, you know, 500 coal miners I'm insuring, maybe I, you know, call up Warren Buffett, who's with Berkshire, and say, hey, can I lay off 250 of these guys? And, and kind of in the short strangle business, you know, you're running up against similar things. You know, I mean, do you reduce your puts? Do you buy insurance against your short puts? Or, or, you know, or, or what times do you, you know, it comes in the risk management. How do I reduce some of my risk? How do I deal with my short put risk? And, and, and that's really going to be the skill of staying in business for many years for an insurance company, or if you want to stay in business many years for uh, a somebody in the short strangle business, it's all your risk management because most of the time you're going to win. So it, it's it's learning the incrasy, you know, idiosyncrasies of that, and I think it's a pretty, uh, you know, for most of the time, is the short strangle business very alluring to retail traders? Yes. Why? High win percentage, absolutely. High win percentage, what else? It's good income, but you know, you're not, most of the time you're not adjusting, it's easy, right? I mean, if you wanted to say to me, you know, if you said to me, hey, Dan, Dan, go in Chipotle restaurant at noon, and you know what? Forget the risk, forget a lot. If you had to get these guys to the, the cooks at Chipotle burritos, whatever it is, and you wanted to get them in a good, easy strategy that they could look like traders the quickest, go sell strangles, right? I could teach them in an hour. Here, you sell this out of the money. Here, I'll show them on the brokerage platform how to sell a strangle and, and sell the put and the call. And it's kind of an easy concept, right? As long as, as, long as the price is between the short strikes, right? You make money, right? I mean, in 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 theory. Now, there's a lot behind that, right? You know, I I can't teach them in an hour how to deal with the problems, but conceptually, it's kind of easy. And most of the time, you won't do anything. But the skill of a short strangle trader is that at five percent of the time, when there's a move. You know, how do you manage it? And that's the magic, right? That's the magic is 
How do you manage it? And we're going to get into some other issues here. So, so let's start with, and we'll answer a lot of your questions. I'll, um, this is for educational purposes only today. You start out here. This is an example I took yesterday in the mid-afternoon. Uh, you know, yesterday was a pretty big day in the SPX. Uh, yesterday, SPX was was down uh, 25 points, probably around 115. And so the VIX popped up. Volatility kind of goes up when the market goes down. Um, and um, this looks like it was it. Oh, um, and so here's a short strangle. SPX was around 2348 at the time, right? So that's this line. So this SPX about 2348. This is your expiration graph, and this is your graph. Let's say yesterday, if I put this thing on, and so the short strangle is we sell the 2430 call, right? That's here, 2430 call. Again, I use the April 28 expiration yesterday in this example which would be 38 days out, right? Uh, so this is about a 38-day trade. And I sold the 2430 calls, which are about 80 points out of the money. And I sold the 2190 puts, which are about 160 points out of the money. And I think if I remember this correctly, I chose the short strikes. I think I might have sold close to a 10 delta call, 10 delta put. And, and delta just means probabilities. You're getting, so a 10 delta call would mean there's only a 10% probability we're going to finish uh, beyond the short call or uh, above or below the short put by expiration. It's a very high probability trade. So you're selling an out of the money call, out of the money put. Let's say we brought in a $8.85 credit. Wait a second. That doesn't seem right to me, does it? I'm just catching this. Let me see. 24.30 and 21.90. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. Yeah, that is correct. That's a strangle. I'm so used to doing iron condors for like a dollar or two dollar credit. So this is an $8.85 credit. So does everybody see what this is? I mean, this, this is a, but, but here's an interesting thing. This is the graph at expiration. This is the graph the day I put it on yesterday. They're two different looking graphs, right? And so, but the real question with the short strangle, I kind of put the margin, or if you're at a brokerage firm, what would, what would Thinkorswim or Trade King or E-Trade or Interactive Brokers, what would they charge you for something like this? Selling a you know a 38 day short strangle, selling a you know 80 to 100 points out of the money in the calls and 160 points out of the money in the puts. What do you think they would charge you on this, guys? What do you think? A stinking boatload of money. So one of the ops, the biggest obstacle to this strategy, in my opinion, is the capital requirement. It's just not efficient, right? Especially in like a retirement account. Uh, there's other accounts where people maybe, it's, it's a little cheaper to do it, like a portfolio margin account, which is more risk-based account, but that has its, its challenges also, right? So this is a short strangle. So the question is, Short strangle, it's a high probability trade, question mark. Absolutely. So that's one reason, uh, that's one reason you would do it, right? Um, is it capital efficient? No. Dan, what do you mean by capital efficient? You know, is it a good yield? Generally not compared to using spreads, right, as we're going to show you in a little bit. Um, in a portfolio margin account, which is more risk-based, it might be more capital efficient, but it's really not true because if you have a short strangle in a portfolio margin account and 
price moves against you, Uncle Vito is going to come over to your house and you're going to have to put in a lot more capital. So philosophy, how does it make money? It makes money from decay, right? You're se in, and you're selling far out of the money calls and puts for, let's say, four bucks or five bucks. And each day those options will decay. And then you have to figure out when would you buy that thing in, right? And as long as the price doesn't move too far up or down, you know, you're going to be able to buy it. You know, if you sell it for an $8 credit to strangle, you know, in not that long a time, you'll probably be able to buy it back for a $6 debit or a $4 debit or whatever. And that's where you have to kind of have a plan how you're going to do that. You know, is this good for monthly income? Yeah, I think... I think this is a one strategy among many that would be good for monthly income. You know, is there a best strategy for monthly income or or weekly income? Is there a best strategy? No, every strategy has pluses and minuses. And we'll get to that in a second. But yeah, I think this would be very good for monthly income. How many problems can develop on the downside with this type of a strategy? Price movement too far down or too fast down, and the option volatility going up. How many problems do we have on the upside? Mostly, it's just price. You know, there's there's a small, very small uh, chance of of volatility hurting us on the upside, but generally, it's just price. So when you're doing this world of short strangles. You have two enemies on the downside, one enemy on the upside. But you have to remember something there, folks. Because the volatilities are higher, or the time premiums and the options are much higher on the puts than the calls, the same delta call, like a 10 delta call or and a 10 delta put, are you able to go farther out of the money on the put side or call side, you're able to go almost twice as far out of the money on the put side as the call side for a same delta. So like a 10 delta call versus a 10 delta put just means the 10 delta put, you're going to be able to go twice as far out of the money. Why? Because the volatilities are much higher or high on the out of the money puts and they're lower on the out of the money calls. Do I think a short strangle is a good, would it be a good strategy that you could do every month or every week for making a good income? Yes, I think the strategy is good, but you need the right pilot at the controls, right? I can buy a new airplane today, right? Beautiful, let's say, let's say I could afford an airplane. So let's say I go buy an airplane, beautiful airplane beautiful paint job and the latest engines and everything. And you say, well, does this airplane fly well? Well, it flies great if you have the right pilot in there. You agree? I don't know how to fly, fly a plane. So that plane would be sitting in my front porch. Could I stick everybody in this webinar on a short strangle today, and will they look like good pilots for two minutes? Yeah. Whether you know options or not, we could say, okay, everybody, sell 10 out of the money puts and 10 out of the money calls, right? And as long as the market doesn't move, everybody looks like a pilot, don't they? They all look good. They got the nice pilot's uniform on, the shiny shoes, right? They look sharp. But if we get a 10% move down in the next week, you're going to find out really quick who knows how to fly the plane, and who doesn't. And that's it. The same with short strangles. You don't always know, you know, who can fly the plane until there's a problem. I can't tell you how many calls I get from people will say, Dan, I was doing great in iron condors for seven months. By the way, during those seven months, the market didn't do anything. But, you know, the market went down 7%, and I lost six months of income. Oh. All it's showing is, hey, they had a brand new airplane. They didn't know how to fly it, and they got in there, right? Uh, George says, would, would SPY or IWM be safer vehicles for strangles 
size and margin wise? Well, again, SPY is one tenth the size of the SPX and IWM is one tenth the size of RUT. So the same vehicle, it's just smaller size. I mean, if you're learning the, if, if you're learning the business, I think SPY and IWM make some sense. But again, it's just how you manage it, right? And 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 anyways. All right. So let's now here's an example. But the me if you asked me the main reason I don't teach short strangles, it's not because of the risk. Number one reason that I don't teach short strangles is not because of the risk. Right? I think a good risk manager could deal with the risk relatively, right? But I wouldn't do it for I wouldn't do it. Right? It's the stinking margin. Right? It's the it's the yield. You know, it's there's 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 better ways to skin the cat. And I just think it's an inefficient use of capital. Now, if you're in a situation where you have so much money you don't know what to do with it, okay, if you're one of the two people in the seminar who just have too much money and you don't you don't even know what to do with it, sell strangles, do whatever you feel like doing. But for most people where capital maybe means something, right? I wouldn't do it. I think it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, sure you could say I'd do it in small size and all that. I just don't think it's efficient use of capital. Because again, to sell one strangle in the SPX, what would you, what would you guess at Thinkorswim or one of these brokers, what would you guess would be the cost or does, can anybody, does anybody know? And they put it in there in there if you sell a 35 38 days out sell a you know 85 point out of the money call and 200 points out of the money put but it's a lot of money right and so to me an alternative is let's buy against that short put and call let's buy some kind of hedge and that's why you turn it into some kind of an iron condor so in this example I'm selling the same call and I'm selling the same put, same call and put, but I'm going 30 points out of the money on the call side and 30 points out of the money on the put side to buy a hedge. Dan, why are you buying a hedge? Because the brokerage firm is going to charge me. I have to put up my wife, my kids, my house, my neighbor for collateral is too much. So just going some distance out of the money. In this example here, I went 30 points out of the money on both sides. And now I'm doing an iron condor, which is an out of the money call credit spread, out of the money put credit spread, you know, similar type graph, right? And I'm getting a $3.15 credit. My margin or capital I have to put up is about $26.85. Hey, Dan, how did you get 26.85? Well, the difference between the short and the long on the call side or the put side is 30. So for one contract, I have $3,000 of risk, right? If SPX goes up to a billion or down to zero, less my credit of $315 equals a margin of 26.85. So that's the capital I would have to put up at my brokerage firm. And so here you can see the expiration yield would be, as of yesterday with 2350, the expiration yield would be the credit of 315 divided by margin of 2685, which is going to give me an expiration yield of about 11.7%. So are my yield potential going to be much better with an iron condor? Absolutely. And as Mike, Mike P said, he put in this trade and he's got $48,000 to sell one out of the money or to sell one short strangle with similar calls or put maybe that I did cost almost 50,000. Here I'm doing a trade where I'm selling you know, similar same call and put, 
buying my protection 30 points away, and it's only eating up capital of 26.85. So my yield's going to be a lot higher on this type of a trade. The magic, folks, is not in the trade. Again, anybody could, you know, learn how to use your brokerage platform and put in an order for a short strangle or a short iron condor. And if the market moves, right, if you're sitting in the cockpit and they got it on cruise control, right, you probably could look like a pilot for a little bit. If the stewardesses came in, they'd see they'd see you sitting there and they'd say, hey, you look like a pilot. You look like you know what you're doing. What if the pilot took it off cruise and he said, let's land this sucker? No. You no, know, sir. So that's an iron condor. Iron condor versus short strangle What's the advantages of a short strangle? You can get a little further. Like if you look at the break-evens, you can get a little further out of the money on the call side and put side for the same strikes versus an iron uh, condor. I think they're easier uh, to manage, easier to put on, easier to understand. The short strangle, they cost a lot of money, and you, and you, you just have the risk, right? Um, the advantage of an iron condor is it's better yields. Um, I think you can build a business around it better because you don't, you know, to me, the, another reason I wouldn't do short strangles is it's like you have this cloud, you know, because when you're doing this short strangle business, you know, one big event can really knock you out. And, you know, it's like living it, it's like being in the Austin district. It's a matter of, you know, you live in the Austin district it's very risky, right? And when you get in the world of iron condors, you kind of have a hedge. You have a hedge, and it's 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 a much better way, I think, uh, for most people to deal with this stuff, right? But again, I think people like the short strangle because it is conceptually uh, easy. An iron condor and rut would look the same way. I don't think I have time to go. And, and doing an iron condor and rut. But there's, I'm calling this the two buck chuck. And you say, Dan, why do you call it the two buck chuck? Because I want two bucks credit. So here's an instance. Uh, I took this yesterday with SPX at 2350. In this example, and this would be kind of a, a uh, alternative to a short strangle. I'm in the May 5 expiration, 45 days out. I'm selling a short call and put. I'm selling the short put at about a 7 delta. Dan, what does that mean again? You're selling it at a 7 delta. It means there's only a 7% probability. We're going we're gonna to finish below my short put in the next 45 days. So that means, to flip it around, there's a 93% probability on that short put that at least the way I wanted to make this where you can see the graph, but I couldn't get the downside. There was so much more room I had, but the graph of extended would look like this. But um, so I'm selling the 2130 put, about 220 points out of the money, and I'm selling the 2450 calls, about 100 points out of the money on the call side with us here. And this is going to be a, you know, the probabilities of this trade Unfortunately, it doesn't always make sense, but the way you do it is you add, you kind of add the delta of the short put and call, which is 13. 13 from 100 is 87. This would be an 87% probability iron condor that, 80% probability iron condor that the probabilities are this whole credit's going to go to zero at expiration. Now, so I'm selling the 2450 calls. I'm buying my wings 30 points up. I'm selling the 2130 puts, buying the 2100 puts 30 points down. I'm 45 days from expiration. I'm bringing in my $2 credit. That's my two buck chuck. My margin is going to be the difference in the strikes, which is 30 or $3,000, less my credit of 200. So to do one two buck chuck, it's going to be about $2,800. To do two two-buck chuck will be $5,600. To do three two-buck chuck 
will be whatever that is, for uh, $8,400 or something. This is a very high probability for 45 days out. And let's look at the Greeks. So this was done yesterday, SPX of 23.49 or so, 23.50, VIX is low. So right now, and most of the last two or three years, we've been in a low volatility environment. Low, very low time premiums in the market relatively because the market's been going up. So people have been getting used to that. Uh, the deltas on this trade, this is a $2,800 trade. I'm laying almost three deltas short for every one contract. Here's my short gamma. Again, this would be a 45-day trade. So a little bit of theta to start out, nothing like it would be a seven-day iron condor. And a theta of seven and a vega of short 73. So this would be an example that I would look at an alternative to a short strangle. And, and this is just an example of one. I'm going to still go very far out of the money in the calls and puts and buy my wings a certain distance out, pretty high probability, way out of the money. If you look at the middle, if you look at this, the expiration graph, it's going to be about, the expiration yield would be about a 7.1% yield, right? For a very high probability trade, the expiration yield would be about 7.1. How did I get that? I just took my credit of $200 for every one contract divided by 2,800, right? I do that right? So 200 divided by 2,800 is about 7.1%. Time decay would be, um, yeah, it would be faster on short strangles. That is correct versus iron condors. Yeah, that's one of the benefits. It would be time decay would be quicker on short uh, strangles. And again, I'm not going to get into, we're going to be doing a whole two-week class on, on this alternative to an iron condor. So we created this, and we've had some, quite a few students have been doing this, and um, it's worked really, really well over the last two years. And, and that's part of wanted to share I think a, a, a strategy like this with everybody, uh, but really get into the risk, uh, risk management. And if you look at this, so this new class starting in a couple of weeks would be a short strangle alternative. We're basically going to teach you a very high probability trade, very little maintenance, good monthly yield, simple but effective risk management plan. It's something you could do in your retirement account. And we'll spend four classes on it. This will be starting, uh, today's the introductory class. Uh, it'll be going April 5th, 7th, 12th, 19th. Each class will go at least an hour. Uh, it'll be $197 recorded and archived, so you can watch it three, four months in the future. You can ask Q&A. Uh, all the Q&A will come to me. We have a class page. Uh, and the classes start at 1 p.m. Central, but the key is, we're going to go over, I'll probably have uh, one of my students who've been doing this for a while come on and share how they're doing it. Uh, we'll put some live trades on, but we're going to really zero in on how to think and manage this thing, when to, how to manage it, or what do you do when the volatility is low, when the volatility is high, what do you do when it goes against you, how to set up a plan. And as always, we'll give you a very concrete four-step risk management plan with how do you set it up in different price and volatility environments, what's your profit target and max loss, when would you adjust it, if any, how do you adjust it, do you adjust it. So we're going to just give you a couple simple ways to do this thing that have been successful and, and share that with you. And I thought just take a couple weeks and focus on one trade that that could be maybe – you know, a lot of you, you, know, you, you, you might, your goal might be, hey, I want to make three to five thousand dollars a month, and that might take one or three trades. And so, but you need a couple trades that can contribute towards that. And I think this would be a, a good trade that could be part of your arsenal of of monthly income. You know, you might do this for a thousand dollars a month or $1,500 a month, or $500 a month. 
And so what we're going to focus on is just really making sure you understand it and kind of focus on the serious questions here and, and, and the management of it. So, so that's it. That's the class uh, I think you'd get a lot out of it. For a $197 class, you, you know, if you've ever done anything with us, uh, that's a, as they say, that's a good deal. You'll get from risk management. If you're, if you're passionate and you want to learn this stuff, uh, we're going to be hammering you on risk management for a couple of weeks. So I'll see you in a couple of weeks, folks. Have a wonderful day. Thanks.